on September 12, 1997, Amelia Waters and her boyfriend, David Foster, ventured into the Sierra Madre Cliffs to relish a peaceful retreat. David never returned. Fifteen years afterward, Amelia finally unveiled the haunting account of the events of that retreat to the Montero Police Department. It was meant to be a defining moment of our journey together, a milestone that would etch an indelible mark on our hearts. I had planned to ask the man who'd become my anchor, David, for his hand in marriage, but the fates had another design, a shadowy twist that I'm condemned to live with till my last breath. Amelia and David's relationship blossomed over three years, starting when they were both 23. An unspoken bond, formed early on, hinted that they were destined to share life's journey. Yet one pivotal question remained unanswered, as Amelia hadn't yet mustered the courage to ask David the life-changing question. While he constantly felt her gentle nudges hinting towards a proposal, she remained oblivious to the real reason behind his hesitation. It wasn't about commitment, it was about crafting a memory she'd cherish forever. David had always known of Amelia's penchant for unique jewelry, She'd often regaled tales of her admiration for sapphire stones and seahorses, expressing how magical it would be to have them encapsulated in a single piece of jewelry. Sapphires, especially of a deep blue hue, carry a significant price tag, particularly for someone earning an intern's stipend. But that didn't deter David. With unwavering determination, he toiled tirelessly, maintaining a frugal lifestyle to amass enough to make her dream come true. After what felt like an eternity, he finally made his way to a trusted artisan in their town to commission a bespoke ring, the masterpiece, with intricately designed seahorses embracing a mesmerizing blue sapphire, was a testament to his dedication. He was elated, confident that the ring would mirror Amelia's own brilliance and uniqueness. With that enchanting piece of jewelry in hand, he felt a deep longing to give Amelia a proposal she'd remember forever. Their shared passion for outdoor adventures presented the perfect backdrop. As September approached, the whispers of fall gently kissed the atmosphere, making it the ideal time for one of their cherished camping trips. The vast expanse of the Sierra Madre Cliffs National Park was their chosen sanctuary. Renowned for its undisturbed beauty, they often sought solace there, delving deep into its untamed realms, away from the bustle of city life. Each expedition was an adventure unto itself as they endeavored to explore untouched terrains within the park. As the weekend loomed, excitement bubbled within them. They meticulously packed their gear, just as they had on countless previous excursions. A thrilling expedition awaited, but little did Amelia know that a life-altering surprise was in store. Navigating the winding lanes that led into the heart of Sierra Madre, David probed. So. Any thoughts on where you'd like to set camp this time? Pensively, Amelia responded. Remember that divergence when we head towards Crystal Waters? Why don't we venture left this time and unravel its mysteries? Sounds enticing. There's bound to be some captivating hideaways there, he concurred. Flipping the trunk open, we began unloading our gear. Amelia and I worked in tandem, swiftly setting up camp amidst the encompassing forest. The density of the woods seemed to magnify every ambient sound. The far-off call of a mountain lion, the stirrings of nocturnal creatures, and the occasional hoot of an owl echoing, making them seem nearer than reality. While Amelia busied herself arranging our sustenance and culinary essentials, I embarked on collecting firewood, pushing away the subtle apprehension that had unexpectedly surfaced earlier. I mentally reassured myself recalling our countless camping experiences in similar terrains. With a decent stockpile of logs and twigs, I sparked a comforting blaze. The amber hues from the flames painted a serene ambiance around. Amelia worked her magic on our portable grill, and the tantalizing aroma of barbecue delights wafted through the air. Dinner turned into a delightful blend of reliving the day's journey and charting out our plans for the morrow. Amidst it all, my mind kept wondering to the impending proposal. The Andici Patreon brought forth an involuntary grin, but patience prevailed. The moment had to be impeccable. Post-dinner, we nestled beside the fire, marveling at the celestial canvas overhead. Starry fascinations had always been a shared interest, 
Our conversations flowed effortlessly, punctuated by bouts of laughter and tranquil moments. However, as the night matured, that unsettling sensation resurfaced. A cursory scan of the periphery heightened the feeling of being observed, but no anomalies met the eye. Choosing to withhold my unease, to avoid casting a shadow over our serene retreat, we concluded the evening. Seeking solace within our shelter, the tent's canvas was zipped tight. Nestling into our sleeping confines, I drew Amelia near, her warmth serving as a barrier against the inexplicable disquiet. Beyond my left shoulder, a soft, rhythmic clinking echoed. I halted, ears straining, attempting to discern its origin. The sound reminded me of pebbles being gently knocked together. With caution, I aimed the beam of my flashlight towards the sound's potential source, yet the thickets revealed no secrets. Rationalizing, I attributed the noise to the forest's nocturnal inhabitants. Many a creature of the night could very well be the orchestrator of such peculiarities. Swiftly, I seized our food box from the vehicle, making my way back, deliberately omitting the incident from Amelia. There was no need to induce unnecessary concern. The symphony of the woods played on as we began preparing our meal. The crickets' uh, serenades, the distant cries of a hawk, and the river's lullaby close by. Yet, occasionally, that soft clinking would punctuate the harmony. Later, as we relished our dessert beside the amber glow, an uncanny hush seemed to blanket the woods. The typical nocturnal chorus faded, leaving only our fire's pops and hisses. Abruptly, the stillness was disrupted by a pronounced crack, akin to a substantial twig snapping. Amelia's gaze locked onto mine, an expression of alarm evident. You heard that, right? She murmured. Acknowledging her, I responded, Could be some wildlife, perhaps an elk. Yet another crack ensued, its proximity undeniable. A palpable tension gripped Amelia. That's no elk. Attempting to keep her calm, I assured, The fire should deter any wildlife. They usually steer clear. Yet as the intervals shortened between these mysterious sounds, my earlier apprehension resurged. Our solitude was an illusion. Out of the blue, a guttural rumble resonated, making every fiber of our being vibrate. No common forest creature emitted that sound. Seizing a fiery branch, it served dual roles as light and defense. Stay vigilant, I instructed Amelia as we strategically positioned ourselves, surveying the encompassing gloom. Emerging from the shroud of darkness, a pair of luminescent orbs stared back, captivated by our campfire. Whatever lurked at the fringes was no longer content in obscurity. The pressing query now, what were its intentions, and mixed it profusely into the tantalizing, roasting meat. The blend of the meat's aroma with the distinct scent of fresh timber was enchanting. These very moments redeemed the initial hardships of establishing a campsite. Amelia inched closer to the flames, her features aglow in its light. Oh, the scent is divine, she commented, her eyes reflecting the dance of the flames. Can hardly wait for the feast, I rejoined. The peculiar events from before temporarily pushed aside. We relished the quietude, occasionally managing the grilling meat, while immersing in the campfire's tranquil rhythm. Yet, at intervals, my senses reached out, vigilant for the mysterious clinking or any anomaly. My gaze flitted across the periphery, yearning for assurance of our solitude. As our feast reached its culinary peak, I permitted myself a sigh of relief, attributing my earlier anxieties to fanciful thoughts. The campfire's serenity, the gastronomic delights and Amelia's soothing presence lulled me into a peaceful state. Arranging the sumptuous steaks on our portable plates, complemented by a crisp salad and foil-wrapped potatoes roasted in the embers, we dove into a gastronomic indulgence. Our conversations flowed, meandering from our day's ventures to upcoming escapades. Gradually, weariness crept in. The day's activities combined with the peculiar disturbances had been taxing. Perhaps we should retire, I proposed, detecting Amelia's drooping eyelids. She gestured affirmatively, indeed, after a brief cleanup. Swiftly, we restored order to our site, diligently ensuring the fire was safeguarded. 
proceeding to our awaiting tent. Snuggling within our cocoon, I drew Amelia nearer. While a fragment of anxiety lingered, her proximity was an anchor, promising solace. On the verge of succumbing to sleep, that distinct, moist clink re-emerged, harmonized with a ghostly hum, seemingly emanating from the abyss. Adrenaline surged, Amelia's grip tightening reflexively. The enigma of the forest deepened, shadowing our dreamscape with uncertainty. The stillness of the night was deceptive. As the hours passed, it was as though the forest awakened from a slumber, stirring with a life of its own. Every rustle of leaves, every distant cry of a nocturnal creature echoed louder and more profound in the blanket of darkness. It started subtly. A soft whispering breeze seemed to carry with it faint melodies, an inexplicable lullaby that was neither menacing nor entirely comforting. It was as though the forest was sharing its ancient tales, told and retold through the generations. Then came the footsteps. At first, I dismissed it as the wanderings of a stray animal, maybe a deer or a curious raccoon. But as the steps grew more pronounced, they became hard to ignore. They were neither hurried nor slow, just consistent, moving in a direction that was undeniably towards our campsite. Karen stirred beside me, her breathing slightly uneven. Do you hear that? She whispered, her voice trembling. I nodded, straining my ears. Probably just an animal. Stay quiet, and it will pass. I whispered back, attempting to sound more confident than I felt. But the steps didn't pass. They stopped just outside our tent. The world seemed to hold its breath, the only audible sound being our own heartbeats. Minutes felt like hours. Then, as suddenly as it started, the steps retreated, fading into the distance. The forest resumed its nocturnal song, but the tranquility was now tainted with an unease that refused to fade. Neither Karen nor I dared to speak. We held on to each other, waiting for the first light of dawn to pierce through the night. Morning couldn't come soon enough. When the first rays of sunlight finally broke through the canopy of trees, we cautiously stepped out, half expecting to find a sign of our nocturnal visitor. But there was nothing. No footprints, no signs of disturbance. Just the remnants of our campfire and the untouched beauty of the forest. Over breakfast, we discussed the events of the night. Karen was of the opinion that it was perhaps a curious forest ranger, or a fellow camper. But deep down, I knew it was something else, something that belonged to the forest and its ancient mysteries. Though shaken, we decided not to let the experience mar our trip. But as we packed up to explore deeper into the Eagle Cap National Forest, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the forest, in all its grandeur and mystery, was very much alive and watching. The lake's surface mirrored the sky above, creating a harmonious blend of cerulean blues and fluffy white clouds. The trees on the far side of the lake cast long shadows, while lily pads floated near the edge, their green surfaces decorated with the occasional pink bloom. A gentle breeze whispered through the trees, and a soft rippling could be heard as the wind caressed the water. Stopping at the water's edge, Karen gazed out over the lake, her eyes wide with wonder. This is breathtaking, she murmured. Seizing the moment, I slowly reached into my pocket, feeling the cold metal of the ring box. My heart raced as I took a deep breath, summoning the courage to speak. Karen, I began, my voice quivering slightly with emotion. She turned towards me, a questioning look in her eyes. Dropping to one knee, I presented the ring box, opening it to reveal the sparkling diamond inside. From the moment we met, I knew my life would never be the same. We've shared countless adventures, faced challenges together, and grown stronger with each passing day. I want to continue this journey with you, facing whatever comes our way hand in hand. Karen, will you marry me? Tears welled up in her eyes, glistening in the sunlight. She looked from the ring to me, her emotions evident. After a moment that felt like an eternity, she nodded, her voice choked with emotion. 
Yes, I will. The weight in my chest lifted, replaced with a euphoria like no other. I slipped the ring onto her finger, and it fit perfectly. We embraced, holding onto each other tightly, feeling the warmth and love that bound us together. The eerie feelings from the night before and earlier that morning seemed to fade away, replaced with an overwhelming sense of joy and love. The lake, with its tranquil beauty, had become a testament to our commitment, a symbol of the life we were choosing to build together. The rest of the day was spent celebrating our engagement, taking in the beauty of the surroundings and relishing the love we shared. The forest with all its mysteries had become a backdrop to the most important moment of our lives, and as the sun set, painting the sky with hues of pink and orange, we knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together as partners in life's grand adventure. The journey back to the campsite was a silent one. Each step echoed with the weight of a newfound understanding. The forest, which had once seemed menacing, now felt like an old friend sharing its secrets with us. Once back at the campsite, I reignited the fire and its warmth provided a temporary respite from the coldness of the revelations. We sat together, hands entwined, staring into the flickering flames. Do you think that was real? Karen asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't know, I admitted, but it felt real. And your reaction, the memories you spoke of. She nodded, looking down at her hands. It was so vivid. I saw us in different times, different lives, always returning to this place, always drawn together by some force. I squeezed her hand. Maybe it's a reminder that no matter the lifetime, we always find each other. She smiled weakly. Or maybe it's a sign that we need to break a cycle. Perhaps there's something we need to do, something we've been missing in our past lives. The thought weighed heavily on both of us. Were we bound to a destiny that spanned lifetimes? Was there a purpose we had to fulfill, a debt we had to pay? We'll figure it out, I assured her. Together. Over the next few days, we explored the woods further, trying to uncover more about the stone circle and the memories it held. We discovered ancient carvings on some of the stones, symbols that seemed to resonate with an energy all their own. With each discovery, the puzzle pieces slowly began to come together. It became clear that the stone circle was a nexus point, a place where energies converged, and where memories from past lives could be accessed. And as the days turned into nights, and the nights into days, our connection to the place deepened. We began to have dreams, shared visions of our past lives, where we faced challenges, celebrated victories, and loved deeply. The memories were bittersweet, filled with both joy and pain. But through it all, one thing remained constant, our love for each other. On the day of our departure, we stood once more at the stone circle. There was a sense of completion, a feeling that we had done what we needed to do. We'll be back, Karen whispered, placing a hand on one of the stones. I nodded, in this lifetime or another. As we walked away, the forest seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. We had uncovered its secrets, embraced our past, and set a course for the future. And while the mysteries of the stone circle might never be fully understood, we knew one thing for certain, our love was timeless. Weeks turned into months, and the incident at the campsite began to feel like a distant nightmare. Karen and I tried our best to put it behind us, focusing on our life together and the many dreams we still hope to achieve. The trauma, however, had left its mark, and the mysterious clicking sounds would sometimes echo in our dreams, serving as a haunting reminder of that fateful night. To help us cope, we sought therapy, and during our sessions we were introduced to the idea of confronting our fears head-on. The therapist suggested that visiting the campsite in broad daylight might offer some form of closure. While the thought was terrifying, we both felt an innate need to face our demons and find some semblance of understanding. So, one sunny morning, we found ourselves driving back to that same campsite. The forest, once a place of nightmares, seemed oddly peaceful in the daylight. 